Hello, my name is Tim Aiken. I'm a director at Active Plan. I'm going to talk about one of our lab projects, the Kobe Data Browser. For those not familiar with the term Kobe, it stands for Construction, Operations, Building, Information and Exchange. It has been developed for the US Army Corps of Engineers as handover data essential to support operations, maintenance and asset management once the built asset is in service. Kobe is being mandated by the UK government for all projects to be used throughout the design and construction cycle and final deliverable as one of the key handover data sets. The Kobe format provides a common way for parties to exchange information at various stages of the project, from inception briefing through to handover for operations. Kobe was devised from the IFC model as a spreadsheet format where each sheet represents a linked data set using common building related terms like facility, floor, space, zones and component. Many software companies have started providing Kobe output and importers for their products. These vary in quality and completeness, some attempting to create all the data and others subsets for inclusion in a federated final version. It is quite possible to manually create a Kobe spreadsheet, but as the project grows and more elements are added to the dataset, it starts to get complex. Some will argue that the answer is to generate a Kobe dataset from one system, a CAD building information model with 3D capabilities able to store all the relevant information. This method has been tried, but importing all the data into one system has proved difficult to manage and keep current. This data is a mixture of authoring from different systems and some manual input and combining data sets. How do you know that the data is valid? Contractually, this data is going to be passed around between different organisations. The client, three to four design companies, main contractor and work package contractors. There could be as many as 20 different sources of Kobe data. If it is misaligned in any way, then depending upon the severity of the misalignment will depend upon the extra cost of fixing it before it is accepted by the client. Tools are being developed to automatically test integrity and completeness of the Kobe data and our data browser falls into this category. For Kobe data to be added to by different organisations, someone is going to have to sign off that it is valid and correctly structured. Manual checking by experts over many related tables is going to be an interesting and challenging task. As a recipient of data for our clients, we don't really want to find out the data is flawed at the import stage and delays implementation into the facility management system. In our lab, we started building a data browser as an easier interface directly onto the Kobe dataset. We want to navigate the data as an O&M handover interface. This means that the display of information on the screen is drawing on values from multiple Kobe sheets. We wanted to ensure that many people can look at the same data concurrently. To achieve this, I decided that we will import the raw data, sheet for sheet, field for field, into an SQL database and view the data through a web browser client. We will then put an interface that closely matches an FM handover application. What I also decided was that only the data in the spreadsheet can be used. This ensures that you get a true view of the data set. I was going to use only a data set generated for the Kobe challenge events. In this case, the dental clinic. I also decided that some form of plan view was needed, as this is one of the best ways of navigating buildings and seeing if the data is in the right locations with the right attributes. The data set in the dental clinic contained bounding box coordinates for spaces on floors and components. When you generate views of, from this type of data, then it's fine until you get a non-rectangular space. In the data browser, I've got two sorts of view, the box plan and then the room polygons. I've generated the room polygon point data 
by drawing polylines round all the spaces and one polyline for the building outline using 2D CAD. Then I've exported these and added them to the coordinate sheet. This is the only addition I've made to the dataset. With the data in the database, we can now write the queries to retrieve the content. In this example, I want to get a list of the equipment used in a system. The tables we need to extract the data from are system, component, type, space, a temporary table called component to space, which accommodates the use of multiple space references in the components table, and floor. We also want to retrieve the name of the manufacturers of the equipment, so we've included a join onto the contacts table. The associations are here shown in red. The result is a schedule of equipment in this system. Further filtering is possible where the type category has been used to define a classification. Whilst working on this project, I have already spotted some errors I've made. In the facility sheet, the linear units are declared as metres, and this is how the coordinate points for the space and component bounding boxes are declared. I exported from Autodesk Revit a 2D DWG file to create the boundaries of spaces. I could have extracted these from the IFC model of the building, but prompted by conversations decided to demonstrate how just simple CAD can be used. The coordinates exported from the CAD system were in millimetres and I copied these into a spreadsheet. That is a simple and easy mistake to rectify but it prompted me to look at the data set and I discovered the space usable height was also defined in millimetres. I downloaded the files from the National Institute of Building Sciences website and opened the spreadsheet in the latest version of Excel Office 365. This should be compatible with Office 2007 version. The file extension is XLSX. The cell values in the coordinate sheet beginning with 1E and followed by numbers are treated as exponent numbers, displaying them as 1E plus 01. So 1E01, a space name, became 10 when it was reformatted to text. I don't know if this was a translation error from 2003 to 2007, or the cells were not formatted correctly when the data was added to the sheet. We have a lot of experience of importing data from different systems, and whilst trivial to fix, it is not obvious to spot. Kobe data requirements will have to be defined for projects in a specification that all parties contributing data will need to adhere to, and avoid embarrassing phone calls. Please look out for our next video, which will include a recorded demonstration of the browser, and what lessons we are learning about the different flavours of Kobe data being produced, including our own. Thank you for watching.